Hey everybody, I'm back. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, I really wanted to use the computer, but I'm still learning how to do all of this. So thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for those that are loyal <laughs> and they come and watch. I appreciate it. Hey, Crystal. Um, so we're going to talk about what women really want. Hey, David. And Pastor Dobbins is going to join me. One of these days, I'm going to get myself. Hey, Thomas. Hey, Steve. Hey, Ryan. I'm just waiting for him to pick up again because he was on here the first time. But um, because of my little mishap with um, the video or whatever, I had to um, get on again. So here I am. And um, we're doing another love lesson. So what is this about the love lessons thing? I'm really doing research. This is like, I'm an English teacher. I'm a life coach. Hey, Shakira. Um, and I'm really doing, this is my form of pre-writing because um, I really want to write a book on uh, relationships or a plan on it. But I want to make sure that it's something that people are really looking for because there's so much out there. So I really just want to talk to people, um, especially men, um, but I'm kind of targeting uh, people that are over dating over 30. So, but I have noticed that sometimes um, people under 30 are still watching. Um, so feel free to comment. Um, I want to hear everything that you have to say about the topic because this is my form of research, just really um, getting into what people want to hear about and what people may be interested in learning about. And I don't want this book to be all about me because I love writing. So I would write it just to write because that's what I do. Hey, Dante. Um, actually, before Mr. Dobbins, uh, Dr. Dobbins, Pastor Dobbins, um, before he gets on, he actually wrote the foreword in this book, There's More in You. So I really don't talk about this book that much, but since he is um, going to be on here, I'm going to read you like, let me see, let me see. Um, just like a quick line that he wrote um, in the foreword of my book. Um, so he wrote, he writes this. Uh, more in you reveals that it's not strange that all of these things happen to you as you live life, um, but they were intended to bring more out of you. There is potential lying dormant on the inside of you. This potential is unrealized power. This is the power that it looks like he's calling for my computer. So hold on, guys. I know it's all over the place, but bear with me. Just a second. Hey doc, I'm on like my phone because um, I try to use the computer because it's more comfortable for me because I don't have a stand and all that stuff. But um, if you could join the live here and then I can bring you on. For some reason it won't let me do it the other way. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to learn. So they're listening to me talk to you. It's not like a lot of people in here, though. Not yet. <laughs> so thank you for your patience for those of you that are waiting for us. <laughs> and those of you that watch the replay, just fast forward. You'll be all right. <laughs> so I'll wait. I'm waiting for you to just uh, come on here. Okay. Okay, so bear with me. I'm going to start over. My goodness. We're going to get this thing right. Um, okay, so we understand in part, I just, I'm just going to start over from the, the beginning of the paragraph and hopefully, um, I can get through. We understand in part, so it is our responsibility to get even more so an understanding of who we are and what we've been called to be. More in you reveals that it's not strange that all of these things that happen to you as you live life. So you've been through some things. Um, and that is not strange, but they were intended to bring more out of you. There is potential lying dormant on the inside of you. This potential is unrealized power. This is the power that your enemies did not want you to discover. More in you reveals your potential and encourage you, encourages you to walk in the power that God has given you. The power to love you 
and to realize that there is more in you. So that's really my message. And um, I haven't been focusing on it, but he did write the foreword. So I had to at least read a little bit of uh, what he wrote about. Hey, Dwayne. Um, but the topic tonight is um, what do women really want? And I noticed, honestly, I don't even know if any women are watching this um, right now because I think I see some people come on and come and come off. Um, but I notice a lot of men have a lot to say about the the topics that I've been talking about. And um, women have been quiet. Um, so definitely, ladies, I would love to hear your voices on these different topics because that's why I really started this um, because I really wanted to um, speak to some women um, about some of our experiences and I wanted to like kind of explore some of those so then that way when I do write the book um, then I'll be well informed on what it is that you're looking for but maybe you're looking to hear it from a man so um, these men a, a lot of men are commenting um, and they are sending me messages. Um, I got a, I real, I just had a conversation with a guy um, last night, and he was just telling me some of the different perspectives on women. So, women, let me let me know what you think about this. But he was saying that he doesn't feel like women are open to hearing men's point, like the point of view of men. That he said that. Um, really um, exploring the, the feelings of men and what men want and different things like that, that they are not, that women are not open to that, that they want to keep that, that same like feminist perspective of um, we don't need a man, um, that kind of thing. Um, what else did he say? He said so much because we talked for a while, but um, I'll probably, some of those things that he said will probably be filtered into this conversation. But um, this conversation, um, I know that a lot of men are saying um, that a, a lot of my relatives, honestly, a couple of my uh, relatives, um, they have been saying that women are just like kind of stuck on the whole Cardi B thing. And um, I'm trying to bring them on. Let me see. Let me see about money. There he is. Okay. So let me know if you agree, um, some of you guys, um, about women feeling like um, it's just all about money. I don't know if that's what it is. Um, there he is. We're on now. <laughs> <laughs> so there was, it's definitely clunky. But this is like my, um, I, I talked about before you got on here, that this is um, basically my pre-writing phase. And I read a little bit of the foreword that you wrote in this book. Hey, First Lady. Okay. Hey, Charles. Um, so <laughs> I read a little bit about what you wrote about. And I was just saying that um, I really wanted to explore the different views of um I think women and men. However, um, what I'm noticing is that men are like watching these videos more. Um, their women are not really commenting that much. Men seem to have a lot to say about relationships, and I was shocked. <laughs> um, so, and they've they've also like reached out a few of them and um, asked me some questions, like really trying to understand. The point of view of women um, and our perspectives on things. Uh, but then I just talked to somebody last night and he said he thinks that men do understand women and that's why women get so much game run on them. So I was like, ooh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, but for those of you that do, that do not know who I'm talking to, this is a Pastor Charles Dobbins. And um, he's a pastor over at New Seasons Ministries. And um, he also, did you write another book after this one? Uh, after Forward in this one? Uh, no, I actually am working, working on it. You're working on it. Okay. Okay. So I thought I missed it, but yeah. So um, we uh, we used to work together and he's, he's, get, he's given me some relationship advice. Um, before you probably don't even remember. You remember? 
like, what are you talking about? It's been so much. Huh? <laughs> Said it's been so much. But I bet you it was probably something to do with the five love languages. It might have been. Because um, the one the thing that I had in mind, because I think you it, ha it was a lot, because we used to talk a lot. But um, I remember that I was going to give this guy a gift. I don't know why this one stuck with me. Probably, I don't know. Because this was like original from you. Like I had just heard this from you and not like from a book or whatever. So I was going to give this guy a, a gift. And um, I really like this guy. And he said, if you're going to give him that gift, don't expect him to give you anything <laughs> um, in return. You give it to him because that's just what you want to do. So... I was like, wow, like, I think that on the topic of the women, um, like, what do women really want, I think there was probably a part of me that was hoping, you know, that it would have been reciprocated. Even though you warned me, I still did it anyway. And I said, oh, no, I'm not expecting anything. Mm. And, um, yeah, I still did it, and he he appreciated it, but he did not do he did not reciprocate, and mm -hmm. I think um, it just left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, it really did. Yeah, and one of those things that now that that right there is one of the things that I um, actually coach you know people on, especially couples with regards to five love languages, a book that's written by Dr. Uh, Gary Chapman. Um, one of those love languages is, uh, is gifts. Um, when someone receives gifts or gives gifts, it's, if, if in fact, if it is identified as their love language, um, that is the way in which they communicate that they, that they care about someone, that they, that they love someone, and that in order for that love or that sentiment to be reciprocated, um, they would expect something in in like manner. Uh, so many times you have in relationships that people are speaking two different languages. It's like someone that's in a relationship that speaks English and the other person speaks mm -hmm. Spanish. So you're talking in languages that you don't understand and wondering why this person isn't doing what it is that you expect them to do. Like take out the trash. That seems simple. That seems, you know, kind of obvious, but if, if they don't know the language, that trash is never going to get taken out. You will still get frustrated, which is the case a lot of times in relationships. People get frustrated because their significant other is not communicating in a language that they understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So communication is, is very key. And, and the topic in which you're talking on with regards to the money and the situation there, it's how are we communicating? You know, what does that communicate? What does that say? What is it that, I guess, you know, um, a guy would feel as, as a woman would expect to receive money or gifts or things like that? Well, part of that is this may be the way in which that woman communicates her love in that receiving of gifts. When she receives a gift from a man, be it, be it monetary, be it an item, be it a trip or what have you, jewelry, that is showing her that he loves her or that he is serious about mm. the commitment mm. or the relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in like mm -hmm. manner, if, if giving gifts is not the love language that that man or that, that, that person speaks in, that that is that is usually the case that you find when men have a have have a have an issue with giving that gift because that's not the way in which they communicate love the way that they communicate love may be in fact um a lot of times it's physical touch you know coming mm -hmm. over taking a walk in the park you holding hands a hug um an embrace um sitting next to one another, you know, at a movie theater. You know, some, it may not be the physical touch. It may just be quality time. Spending that time together, going out to dinner, you know, 
and 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 maybe again taking that walk in the park, spending the time talking on the phone. You know, it it could be that that man's love language is words of affirmation. What is it that she's saying to build him up, to let him know that she's in his corner? Those words in which she speaks. A lot of times people talk about a man's ego. Well, uh, here, here's the thing. It's not necessarily the man's ego mm -hmm. that is important to him, but it is the words in which you speak in that they are affirming. They are affirming. They are encouraging. They're helping that man. They're giving him, in essence, they're empowering him to do or to be a lot of times what God has called him to be. Because there's so many things that, that he may be facing that's telling him what he's not and what he can't do. So when a woman is there to encourage him or give him words of affirmation, that lets him know that she loved, that she cares about. She's serious about him. She's loving him. Yeah, and I think you remind me of what the guy I spoke with last night what he was talking about um, in regards to, I posted, um, I guess, a meme, if you will, and it talked about how um, women need to stop trying to teach a man how to date them and how to give them flowers and when to do this and when to do that. And I, I posted, um, are women focusing on the wrong things? And what this guy said was that women have neglected to inspire a man to do those things. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I didn't really say much in the comments, mm -hmm. but I was thinking like, ooh, like um, we, a lot of times as women, we don't realize how much power that we actually have um, to inspire, to encourage, to uplift. And a lot of times we're not doing those things and or I mean, in my case, I definitely would get impatient with the process. And we all know that love is patient. Love is kind. So I would be doing those things, not necessarily out of love, but just to get to receive what I wanted to receive so I could feel the way I wanted to feel. And that posed mm. a problem. That was a big problem. And there therein lies therein lies an issue because the motivation, as you just said there, was what's in it for me. Yes. And, <laughs> and we have to understand love, love is not so much, love is never what I can get. Mm -hmm. Love is what I can give. Understand, we serve a loving God. And God is, is a giving God. That's why I, 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 I oftentimes, you know, share and tell people, you, you, can, you can really tell the difference if someone really loves mm -hmm. you. It's it's what are they willing to give? Yeah. Well, what are they willing what to give? What are they willing to sow into the relationship? Because if it's just one way, if they're always just looking to see what they can get mm -hmm. out of it, think about it. When you go to the bank, <laughs> this is a very common, yeah. this is a common example. You go to the bank and you, you keep withdrawing on an account. If you keep withdrawing on that account and don't put deposits in, we we know what usually happens. You come you come and you get a message on that receipt. NSF, right? No sufficient funds. You have not deposited into that account. You've not deposited into that relationship. So a lot of times people get upset. They get disappointed. They get let down because they're expecting or they're trying to withdraw on an account that has insufficient funds. Oh my God. That I mean, this is my question with that. This is my question. Because mm. this has happened at this point for me countless times where I have, I'm a, a person that I give and I expect to receive. Um, so mm -hmm. I may need to work on it, but this is real, okay? Because that's what I believe mm -hmm. in being is real and not being fake for Facebook. So I'll do all the things, all the things. And I'm like, okay, I'm depositing into this account, depositing, 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 and then very little in return. And mm. I'm like, um, this is not going to work. And I have found that I'm not the only woman. So I know a lot of women. I got one woman, Jamie. I don't know, Jamie, if you're <laughs> with me. One woman uh, looks like it's watching right now because a lot of times it is the guy's. 
um, they just don't return the same energy, even if it's just energy. So even if it's that first, mm -hmm. um, you know, at the, the very beginning where it's like, I may be excited and they're just like, oh, you know, they're just not returning that same energy. And it's kind of like, mm -hmm. well, what do you expect to happen? And then wonder why I'm not interested because you didn't, mm -hmm. you didn't give enough when you had the opportunity. So they're mm -hmm. always like, with guys are like, uh, what is it that women want? Like you want that security. You know, I came up with three S's. So the first one is security. Yep. And even not necessarily mm -hmm. financial at first, you just want that consistency, like knowing this person, he usually um, contacts me around this time. Like you just want to have something in mind of what he's going to do instead of just random, whenever I feel like it, if I'm bored, you know, translation, if I have nothing else better mm -hmm. to do. And I'm like, do guys not realize that we know this? Like, I'm a mom. I have two yeah. boys. Like, I know how guys think. I have a brother. I have a dad. Like, we talk. And I ask them questions all the time. Like, what does it mean when a guy says this? What does it mean? Like, I that's the part I don't understand, guys. Feel free to argue with me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't understand that. Like, why would you be inconsistent, but then yet expect to keep interest? Like, you're not offering that security mm -hmm. and even interest. Like, even in your interest, you're not offering yeah. even that much security. Not paying my bills, because I got mm -hmm. that, you know? You, that's very, yeah, that's interesting. And, and I, I mean, I don't mean to, inter, you know, to interrupt here, because you're, you, you're, you're going down some, some the trails that, that have left a lot of questions on a lot of, a lot of women's minds that, and, and I, I've heard this isn't the first time I've heard this. Mm -hmm. um, me, you know, I, I am, uh, I'm in IT, I'm in business, I'm in ministry. Uh, a lot of times, you know, mm -hmm. what I find is a way in which to relate this, look at it, you know, and again, I look at things a lot of times from a financial standpoint, okay. because, you know, and, 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 and a lot of, a lot of women today, you know, are, are very, you know, business minded. They kind of, they know what they want. Um, they understand some things. So in your, in your, in your example, in that you were giving in the relationship and you were doing things, but you weren't seeing a return, you know, we have, you know, there, there is something that's in the financial, um, arena that's called, you know, a bad investment. Ooh. You know, when you have <laughs> an investment that you are investing in and you are expecting a 10% return because, all of the information that you receive and all of the advertisement that this guy was given was like, I'm going to give you 10, 15% return on your investment. Well, wait a minute. Now, after, you know, a couple investments that you made, you take a look at your, um, your, 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 your portfolio, you look at the relationship and the relationship has a negative balance on it. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. That. I got a neck. Well, okay, wait, maybe, maybe this is just a rough patch. Maybe, you know, I understand, you know, that the stocks go down, but they, they're surely he's going to bounce back <laughs> up. Maybe the interest, maybe he's going to catch, maybe he's going to catch a hint or something. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, a ministering angel will come by and whisper in his ear. Maybe if I pray hard enough, he'll catch, you know, some of these things that we saw, you know, as, as you know, okay, lady, you know, I know, I know you've been doing it. I know somebody going to hit some hearts out there. They're going to hit some likes here in a minute because, because what we're talking about is the real. You saying keeping it real. So I'm just going to yeah. go ahead and keep it real you're making investments really if you wanted the truth you want the I truth, want the truth. Now, now i'm telling you yeah because you know Come the on. truth the, <laughs> okay the truth is you're investing ladies listen you're investing in a ponzi scheme oh no Tragic. you're investing in a ponzi scheme a ponzi scheme looks like on the surface that it's going to give you a whole yeah. lot of returns on your investment what it's actually doing is it's taking your money well it's taking your good okay this is why the Bible speaks of us being wise stewards. See, wisdom is, is what you get when you know and understand, but therefore you also, watch this, you know how to apply mm -hmm. what you know and understand. So applying the principles of what it is that you're pouring into or what you're giving in a relationship with the expectation of getting 
what you put mm -hmm. in in a return. Okay. So your relationships, you if you don't go into a relationship expecting a return, chances are you're not going to get a return. Yeah. Because the thing of the, the sad the sad commentary that, that you have with, with, with some brothers out there now, okay, you it's know, not those all. I don't care you get mad at me. I'm just telling the truth. You know, I know I, that's why I say some, you know, and, 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 and in like manner, you know, there's ladies out there that's like this too. You know, you're going to take whatever someone gives mm -hmm. you. And if you don't have to give anything in return, this is what this is what I call, you know, the the um uh it, it, it's like you know do, doing the very least doing the yes, bare minimum, the bare you know, you, minimum. It's, it's the bare minimum coverage you know it's that it's that that the general liability. or the safe ladder getting your sr getting your sr22 you, you you just got liability coverage you know you, you don't got full yeah. coverage so 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 they're doing they're doing the bare minimum in the relationship just just the bare minimum to say oh i got a man or oh i got a girl yeah. or oh, i got a boot just the bare minimum but in reality, you are making an investment. This is your mm -hmm. time, your finances. These are things that are precious that you can't get back. Right. Mm -hmm. So ladies and, and ladies mm -hmm. and men, you know, mm -hmm. I, I challenge you now to look at your investments. Okay. Consider your investments. Be a, being a wise steward. This is one where you have to now, again, what you're pouring into a relationship is the understanding Okay, does that man have the understanding of what you are pouring into? You are making an investment. Mm -hmm. So my understand so listen, if I'm making an investment in this relationship, I need you to understand that we are going to spend time together. Mm -hmm. Because spending time together is a way that it, it's a way that I show someone that I care about them, that they mean something to me, that I love them. And the more that I'm able to spend time with you, it's therefore showing or giving us an opportunity to build this relationship so that it can grow. Right. So in essence, what you're doing is you're telling him now, now, I don't know, someone told you, you know, they were, you may mention that they told, you know, like, you know, the women don't, you know, talk enough or teach a man or train or whatever. It's not even about teaching or training. It's sharing. It's communicating, oh. communicating what love means to you, communicating also how you expect, watch this, expectation okay. what you expect to receive okay so that he is showing you that he's in the relationship that he's in it to bring about a return on your mm -hmm. investment so as you pour in he knows that okay this is what she expects so if i now do this if i do this is going to bring forth a return. Okay. Because she's now given me her two talents. Yeah. I'm taking those talents and I'm going to reproduce them. So I'm going to cause those talents to then grow. So yeah, I think that a lot of times we can try to um, make it clear and I have done that. Um, but here's the thing. Um, I'm going to read this comment and I'm going to get back to the um, cousin Mondell saying, um, why does everything have to be so over overanalyzed? Let's just have fun and enjoy life. Geesh. Here's the thing. I've tried that approach because I, I feel like I'm running mm -hmm. out of approaches at this point, but I'm not that old yet, mm -hmm. so we'll see. So, um, I've tried to, like, let me not, you know, let me just see where this thing goes. But I think when you're over 30, you're just kind of a little too old to just see where it goes and not think about what you're doing because of the wisdom that should be in place at that point. So I felt like with this particular topic, what do women really want and things like that? I felt like sometimes um, we're confused on both ends. So as a female, sometimes I'm confused because I may try to deliver everything that they said they wanted and then it doesn't make a difference because they're not reciprocating mm -hmm. or they're not even delivering what they said they were going to deliver on so that's a problem so uh, mm -hmm. that's where you talk about the Red bad flag. investment where you're like well I thought it was mm -hmm. going to work and that happens so you kind of have to suck it up buttercup kind of thing 
But then when it comes to being over 30 and dating, you really do need to be clear. Some of this stuff is common sense. So I'll run it down really quickly because um, it's like 934. But security, support, and substance. I feel like in a nutshell, mm -hmm. and women, if you see this, then let me know if that's what you want. If you disagree, whatever, then go ahead and talk about that in the comments. But that's basically, in a nutshell, what um, I've always wanted. Security, having that emotional support, not always financial. You need to balance it out if you don't have, you know, mm -hmm. both consistently or you're not able to do that. You've got to have some substance, meaning that you, um, it may be just you um, being, having the ability to analyze. Because for me, that's huge because I'm an intellectual. So you got to be able to get on another level. So it's not just about substance as far as your money, but it's also about where does your, what does your mind do? Can you lead? Can you do the things that um, I may be lacking in? Maybe I'm lacking in an mm -hmm. area. Are you stronger in that area? That's your substance. Because if you can make money, mm -hmm. you don't have to actually have that money right then. You know, you can just, be me knowing that you can go out and get it that's enough for me but a lot of men are saying mm -hmm. like oh well i don't have it that like you're focusing on the things that you don't have like that is the hugest turn off when men are like frustrated mm -hmm. with of course want, women want their bills paid it's common sense like i i, I don't mm -hmm. understand why men even i don't know maybe you can speak to it because i'm not trying to you know, talk down on anybody's and their views. Like, you know, maybe they are really confused. Like, why are women so focused on that? But we want to feel secure. We want to feel like our bills are paid. Yeah, and and well, no, that that is one of the uh, one of the the primary senses for a woman, and that is security. Um, for most men, it is provision or providing or being looked upon as someone that that can do. And for a lot of you know, the the case, the case where the man that doesn't have enough at that time, mm -hmm. what what a lot of men go through is they go through a a sense of 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 diminished self worth. Okay. They feel mm -hmm. less than a man. Because they can't provide or they don't have the mm -hmm. money or enough money to do what they think the woman needs or what the woman okay. wants in providing the security. So a lot of times men, they, they suffer in silence. They won't say really what's wrong. They won't, they won't verbalize the frustration. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times what happens is their frustration comes out in their actions oh. or should i say maybe they're in action a lot of men are hashtag going around inaction. frustrated do nothing <laughs> hashtag do nothing because my thing and, is my biggest frustration yeah. with it is that you don't always have to have a lot of money it's about like i said the um support so maybe your money is low, but you got me emotionally, you know, like maybe I can call and talk to you about whatever problems that I may be going through. You can pray for me, you know, like you got me emotionally because you may not have a substance mm -hmm. at that time, but you have something to mm -hmm. give. Or maybe you're, you do something to show that you were thinking of me, you know, or maybe you mm -hmm. go out and um, plan something that didn't cost a lot, but it was very thoughtful. You know, it, it's like, it seems oh, yeah. like men just completely shut down because of their own issues of self-worth. Because as a woman, I'm an encourager. So I can tell you, I literally mm -hmm. tell guys, if I'm dating, I'm going to tell them there's more in you. I'm going to tell them that kind of stuff. Not like, not like to the point where it's corny, but I can tell, you know, <laughs> when um, there's some mm. stuff going on. And I'm going to say that, and then nothing. And, like, they still, even my ex-husband, he was the same way. Like, mm -hmm. and he explained that. Like, I'm just going through. And then it's always back on the woman. It's still a woman's fault. Like, it's still not enough. Like, I'm not enough for you. I'm not enough for you. 
And my response to that is, no, you're not enough to yourself. Because you don't know who you are as a man. You don't know that you're a king. You don't know that there's more in you. You don't know that all you have to do is think it. And it is so. Like, you don't know that. But it's my fault because I'm getting frustrated mm. with the fact that you don't know who you are. You know what I mean? And mm. this is like my cousin says, what did he say? He said, it's always something else. Like he said, he's given everything that he has and it's always something else. So I am going to like flip because I've got my little, uh, I've been on a soapbox, but in some cases, if it's always something else with the woman, then she may have self-worth issues. So you could be building her up, building her up, building her up. And she's like a balloon and she just deflates as soon as you walk away. So that is the case in some cases. But there's mm -hmm. so many successful, educated women that go through the same thing that I'm talking about. And they're not listening um, to the videos a lot, I noticed. But they're out there because yeah. I'm friends with them a lot of time. And they're, like, completely frustrated. And then he says, a lonely, it's always a lonely friend who poisons their relationships and the woman falls for it. She can't buy me. Money is the root of all evil. The love of money is, I'm going to just... Re <laughs> corrected as I'm reading it the love of money because I like I like money but I'm not in love with it um mm -hmm. so I'll give you a second to let kind me of respond. Before, before we go before we go too far on the on the on the comments here I I do want to get back to something you said okay. with regards to um the security uh you know and and as as human nature you know you have food shelter and security mm -hmm. And and these these things are are very important to to human beings, and that uh, security is one of the the chief or the primary things that that a woman seeks. And and the thing that you were talking about, um, you know, as far as the various types of security, you know, not you know financial security, a lot of times is what most men think that women want. But you you stress the other things, you know, the emotional security as well as the spiritual security, having a secure sense of who you are. In that in that relationship with God, having a secure sense of of where you're going or what it is that you need to do, you may not be where you're at, you may not be what it is that God has called you to be, but knowing that you're on the yes. way, knowing that this that this that this right here is not the mm -hmm. end, but this is the beginning of something good. And see, a lot of times, what men, a lot of men and women that I that I've also talked to, when you find this that that inactive state. Mm -hmm that they're in, this is where uh, a lot of times people don't see this, but this is where people have gotten weary. Okay. They've gotten weary. They've gotten frustrated because of the things in which they've tried and they feel like nobody understands. Mm -hmm. They feel like that no one understands that they've been trying and they've mm -hmm. been trying for so long. They've been trying. They've been doing what they know to do, but it just has not been working okay. out. And, and, and they need someone to understand, not to, sim not to have sympathy, but empathize with them. And to know that, listen, I know that you've tried this. I know that you, you may not like the job that you're in, but that's okay. This is a this is this is a means to an end. And just because you don't like this job, understand that God could be setting you up for your next job. You're learning a skill set. You may be learning. It may not even be something that you might like to do, but the skill that you may be mm -hmm. learning is that of discipline, mm -hmm. of that of getting up every morning at seven o'clock mm -hmm. so that you can be mm -hmm. at a job at eight mm -hmm. fifteen. This this discipline that God is developing in you is preparing you for your next opportunity. So helping a man or a woman to see that that this does not mean the end, that they're not just stuck in a in a ditch, they're not just spinning their wheels because a lot of times that's what they're feeling. Yeah. They're feeling like they're spinning their wheels. They feel like they're stuck out there in the wilderness and they're just wandering around aimlessly and nobody understands. Nobody understands the frustration that they're in. So when people are pouring into them and they're pouring in and they're trying to tell them, listen, you ought to do this. Or listen, you could do this. Or listen, you ought to do it. Yeah, but but what about where I'm at? You don't understand. I need some help. Out of the, I'm stuck in a rut. And you're telling me to go, but I can't go because I'm yeah. stuck. And see, what people need to understand now is, is, is in actually seeing that someone is stuck. Okay, let's stop spinning the wheels. Sometimes people just need to be lifted or should I say uplifted. You're okay right where mm -hmm. you're at. God is working on you. God has you on the potter's wheel. 
You were, yes, you were a broken vessel, but God is restoring you. Mm -hmm. God is fixing your life. God is changing you. This is a part of the transformation mm -hmm. process. This is where now you can't lean to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him. This is God's way of repairing you. And this is where now those that are more spiritual minded, this is where we can now even be more of a help because, listen, it's not nothing that you can do or yeah. that you can a lot of times say. But what you can do is pray. Okay. Because I believe that prayer changes mm -hmm. things. And even when you don't know what to do or what to say, when you take it to God and say, God, you know what it is that they're dealing with. Lord, you know what it is and what doors to open for them so that they can see the light. Lord, you know what it is that I, I may not even have mm -hmm. to say anything. But Lord, just maybe maybe the sweater that I put on may spark an interest in them, Lord, that they may see it in another light. It's something about prayer. Yeah. And so many people have gotten away yeah. from prayer gotten away from that place that you go to seek the face of God. You've gotten away from that place, mm -hmm. that place where God knows. Listen, who has all the answers? Who is it that's omniscient? Yeah, that's that. Who is it, who is it that can lift someone out of their rut? Who is it that's omnipotent? Yeah. Who is it? Who is it that knows? Who is it that knows? Who is it that has the power? Mm -hmm. So many times we forget. We do. We forget. We forget about the mighty God that we serve. Yeah. We definitely we do. About that. We definitely and, do. And, and the, sad, the sad commentary to that is that people usually don't turn to God mm -hmm. until they are stuck or when the tires are flat on the car and they're using God like God's a spare yeah. tire. Well, listen, I come to you, God is not a spare tire. God is, God, God, God is more than that. Yeah. God is, God is four brand new Michelin. Yeah. God is. God is, he's more than a Tesla. He's more than a, he's more than a Lamborghini. He's more than a Porsche. Yeah. He's more than a Boeing 770. He's more. He's more than. And it's these, it's times like this where if we, if we are really in a, in a, in a true relationship mm -hmm. and, and we can see the good in that person. See, there's times when we need to pray. We need to go to God and pray mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. And see, see, Here's another thing, and I, let me close because I don't want to get too far along on the on the on 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 this here way. When we pray for someone that we've come into contact mm -hmm. with, a lot of times we feel that that this is our relationship, but but sometimes God sends us in the people's mm -hmm. lives for either a reason or mm -hmm. season. Sometimes it's your responsibility to water, to water that seed that's been mm -hmm. planted. It could be someone else's. That that's someone else's wife. That's someone else's husband. But God sent you along to encourage them, to help them to get to the place where they can meet who it is that God has for them. And in the process of you helping them, God will show you. He will show you to your Boaz. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was that was really because good. Ruth that was, was helping Naomi. Y'all see. I'm always see, looking for the See, I, 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 I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying not to. Try not to preach, but but every time yeah, she, I, you know, what is it? Dewanda would be here. She was at church. <laughs> <laughs> she would be here at church, and I think See, um, I have to read her message later. But because I didn't get to it, I'm gonna read it and respond to it. But I saw you. Oh. I definitely saw you, and that was really, really, really good because I had not heard that perspective. So that was my love lesson. The mm. part about when you said. Sometimes that's not your husband. Sometimes that's not your wife. But you've come into that person's life for a reason, a season. Um, you, I feel like I'm missing one because I've heard that one before, but I'm missing one. Woo. A reason and a season. Yeah. But, oh, God, oh, my God. Holy Ghost just dropped something in my spirit. Here. Yeah. Because you were helping or assisting that mm -hmm. man as if though you care for him as a wife would. See, the Bible says, a man that findeth a mm -hmm. wife. See, when you're doing that and you're showing that kind of love, that's because of the God that's in you. Mm -hmm. That's because of what God put there. And because you love him first, because you love God first, you're a wife unto him. You're now going doing an outwardly expression in the natural, which you've already been doing in the spiritual. Mm -hmm. So now you're showing someone, you're showing your husband that you are a wife, even as you're pouring into or watering someone else. Mm -hmm. That's not your husband. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, sometimes 
God puts you in a position to encourage someone and to prepare someone for what God has for them up the road. Mm -hmm. But just when you thought that you was in the field gleaning, all of a sudden favor tapped you on the shoulder. Yeah, when you just been putting in work <laughs> to out here. Not giving all you was in because you was in the field. In, um, in that necessarily, mm. but as far as somebody, always, you, you need to go back and check. Go back and check out Ruth. Kind of stuff. Um, no, no, no. But go back and check out Ruth. Yeah, but <laughs> I will say this is that it can, whether for a, a man or a woman, it can be frustrating when you are treating people right. You really are treating people mm -hmm. right, and. For, the, for things just not to work out. And like you said, sometimes people are tired. So that's why they shut down. So we shouldn't take it personal um, because they're not no. actually coming through. We should pray for them. And that that's definitely, um, for me, that is in the book as well where I talk about like um, letting go. And a, a part of letting go is definitely praying for that person and um Oh, letting them go, you know, and wishing them the absolute best um, in their future relationships. So you don't have to necessarily mm -hmm. continue to still be in relationship with that person, but you can still send them all the love in the world. And that is definitely anybody that gets frustrated, especially if you're over 30 and you're dating, it is a frustrating experience. So you're blessed if you stayed married at 20. You know, you got married at 20 and you said, Pastor Dobbins is blessed. Okay, so, uh, but for the rest of us oh. um, that maybe we've had failed relationships or bad marriages or whatever, um, it, it's really frustrating and we get really tired. And the only thing that's really going to pull us through is prayer. So I'm so glad that you mentioned it because I saw a comment earlier. Um, I think it was Mondell again, where he was talking about um, social media has this messed up the whole idea because you never see on social media talking about pray for nobody you know it's always how about how women want money men wanting sex it's never about um just lift each other up you know so what if she what if she is a gold digger you need to pray that god changes mm -hmm. her heart because she's a gold digger because she's hurt and she's trying to protect herself that's why she's a goat. There it is. Let's get to the root cause. Let, let, let's stop. Let's stop. Let's stop picking at the right. scam. Because see, the gold digger, the gold digger is 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 nothing more than the the hurt or the injury. And see, because of the actions and the things that, that a woman uses and in, in essence to get that, to get money or to get what she wants, she's then called or goaded. And so you start we start picking at the scam. Let's go to the root. Let's go, mm -hmm. let's go to what caused yes. the problem. Let's go to what caused the hurt. Let's let's talk about all the all the years of the deceit and the deception that that she had to go through. Before let's talk about what point. it is that happened to her. See, there's a lot of hurt that that has happened that has caused the reaction. And see, people people don't understand that that it takes sometimes it takes spiritual medicine to heal those kind yes. of wounds. So men, when it you're getting frustrated and talking about, I don't know what these women want. <laughs> They need your mm. prayers. They definitely need your mm. prayers. Where if you if you run into somebody, pray. I just I tell somebody to pray for me. Like you know, you feel like you don't know what's going on with me. You feel like you confused. Send up a prayer or two or three or seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever you feel like you feel led to do to pray for me. Don't like look at me with the side eye. I don't know what's wrong with her. You know, don't do that mm. because that's not that's right. not what we are to do. So if you profess to love God, then that should really be your inclination to do that. And you really shouldn't be looking for a woman to necessarily marry if you can't pray for. Her. Right. And and here's another thing. Now let's let's not, and conversely, just like you say, you had to go digging, but then too, also you had you had the player out there, play a player, you know, because men get hurt mm -hmm, too, and you have to understand why are they players, you know, because you know, like, it was someone you, they they put their trust in, and then they got hurt. They can't trust them, so they feel like they got to keep the side piece all, right, the time. all the time, and you got to have one on the back. And, and the A and B and C, you know, selection. They they you know they they feel like you know, and and it's it's these things 
that have occurred that have happened in people's lives and these these demonic spirits that have now attacked them mm -hmm. and they feel like they're stuck that they don't have no recourse but to do these things they don't want to do them they 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 go they when they're alone and they look up at the ceiling and there's no one else there but them mm -hmm. and the tears roll down their face because they are ashamed and hurt because of what they did but they feel they had to do what they did uh -huh. in order to you know what to see, church again I to feel some kind of way. See, oh my God! See, men get hurt they too. They do. And thank, thank you, Julius. Julius just put a comment on that. Men get hurt too. Yes, yes, they do. Men get hurt they too. They do. They do. And see, men, it, men have been taught for so many years. You look, you got to be a man. You can't show no tears. You can't show no weakness. You can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Men get hurt mm -hmm. too. They do. And you know, you know what I'm saying hurt people, hurt people. They do. They do. It's a, and and that's it's what's like happening. A, it's a Hurt cycle. People are hurting people. So don't take it. It is. It's personal. a vicious cycle. It's one of those things. I know it is personal, but don't take it personal. And it's so many. We said you know so what? many things. I try to pull out like one love lesson, but there was so much uh, this well, time. Listen, like one topic, you, you have. I don't know. There's so many. There are so many nuggets in your book. More in you. You don't. Over the years. Um. I want to, first of all, thank you for writing that book. I want to thank you for writing that book. I want to thank you for allowing me to even do the forward on that book. That, that, that book has, 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 given, has given me so many nuggets. There are so many nuggets in that book because even when people feel like that they are down to their lows, mm -hmm. understand that God put more in yes. you. You know, I preach from a scripture now, one of my favorite scriptures is Ephesians 3 and 20. You know, now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can even ask or think according to the power that's working in you. There's more in you. Just when you think that you don't have it, just when you think that you can't, just when you think that you can't go another day. Yeah. There's more. And you can't. God said there's, there's more. There's more love in this case. There's but more. there's more love. There's so more. even if you feel like I can't, I gave everything I had, mm. <laughs> and more. I can't do it anymore. Uh, come That's on now. what. Um, come on now. I've, I don't know. I've been through so much, and I still feel like I can come with that same level of passion. But I'm wiser now, so I'm not so quick to do that. But I still have the passion. I still have the heat, and I think a lot of people. That's what saddens me, and I think Dewanda, uh, she talked about that, where um, she really gets sad about it, uh, the state that people mm. are in, because they're not able to do that. They're not able to, like, fully tap into the passion that's within them, the love that that's within them, because they're yeah. so hurt. So they're either out here playing people for um, mm. sex, or they're playing people for money. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> so Y'all better listen. You know, um, mm. But it's one of those things. So we're we're all you know we're all in this together. So we all have something that we have to work on. So I never want. I know I kind of did a, a few rants, which is um, unusual for me. But um, this is one that is it's kind of annoying to me that guys think that, and they're so like, oh, women just yeah. want the money. But then there's so many women that are carrying men. So it's so confusing to me. Like I don't understand this one. So guys. Get me together yeah. if I still don't understand. And like, feel free to send me a, a message because I'm really thinking about doing this with this book. I'm thinking about um, talking to men and doing like, um, like interviews or something from uh, different mm -hmm. types of men because uh, I feel like the Steve Harveys, um, who else is out there? Derek Jackson. Like, those are just like one type. And everybody feel like, oh, no, this guy I met, he different. You know what I mean? Like, they be like, no, he's not like that person. You know, I think it's Steven somebody is another one that's getting big out there. Um, that's right. In the Ooh, we got a question out huh? there. Julius got a question. He says, when a woman knows a man is interested in her, does everything has to go her way in order for a man to have her? For an immature mm. woman, absolutely. Immature woman. Mm. So I just wanted to answer it quickly mm. so we wouldn't be, you know. Um, so if you do get that impression, a lot of times she may not yeah. um, have developed um, 
in that area. So you just, it's, it's a prayer thing again of seeing if it's worth oh, yeah. um, going through um, that process with her as she does develop uh, because it does, women can come off that way for sure. Yeah. And you said something real key there. Uh, Julia said something it her way. It's either her way mm -hmm. or the highway. And a lot of times, you know, women are hurt and they feel that, you know, unless it's my way, you know, it can't be. And see, that's, that again is, is a level of the immaturity that has come about because of the hurt, because they have not grown from a place mm -hmm. of hurt. They haven't grown from that to see that, hey, wait a minute, you know, it, you know, it, 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 it may not necessarily need to be my way. I need someone who is in this relationship with me because if it's just your way, then that means there's a one way relationship. That means that the communication is going to be one way. And, and really, that's not that's really not a communication. That's that's more or less like a dialogue or, or a dictatorship. You just commanding. You just giving yeah. orders, and you're just looking for someone to follow. You're not looking for a husband. You're not looking for someone. You're not man. Right. A man wouldn't be she looking for a husband. Ready. See, you're just looking for someone to follow orders. You're looking for someone to follow in rank and in lines, and that's not a healthy relationship. No. So if that's it, you know. So yeah, you need it, it, communication. Let the woman know, hey, no, if, if we're going to be in a relationship, it's going to be it's going to be two way. It's going to be an A and B conversation. Right. It's not just the A conversation. Well, what okay. I will say now, too some want to know is the root of that is security. So before I talked about what women want, security, support, substance. Security. So a lot of times mm. women will say, I want things my way, and they'll seem controlling because they have not, they don't feel secure with you. So um that is tough because i mean i've had people men ask me that question before as far as like it seems like no matter what i do she still seems to like question everything she still doesn't trust me so that's when i do resort if you if you're doing everything that you need to do um to provide her with that security and she's still like that that's when it does go back to prayer for sure so oh yeah well listen we won't have to do this again you know it's already yeah Woo -wee. It, 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 you know, you know, time flies when it gets. Yeah, good. yeah. I think. <laughs> sorry for the delay in the beginning. I'm like, I don't know why I can't do it from a computer because that would be so much easier. But I can't. Yeah, so. but you know, anything worth having is worth working for. So they. Yeah. Go, bam. So yeah, if you guys have any <laughs> questions, because um, we're about to go off at this point, but if you have any questions, then um, feel free to inbox um, any topic ideas then feel free um, to inbox. I do have a YouTube channel. Um, so my old videos are on there, most of them. I've kind of um, been, I'm a little behind on uploading some more, but um, they are there. If you want to um, go check that out, I'll put the link um, down in the comments um, for the, and then any, any comments that we missed, um, we'll look through. I definitely will. I don't know. I know he's busy, but I'll look through and um, <laughs> try to respond to that because I know um, I like my comments responded to. <laughs> so when I comment on people. Hey, videos. one other thing before we um, get off here, I cannot let you get off here without telling people how they can get your book. Because I saw there was a comment. Someone wanted to know how to get your book more in you. Yeah, it is on Amazon. I think I have a few. Um, I've always been bad about promoting. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, well, we're gonna have to do this more often I now. Know. So I'll, <laughs> I'll definitely. I've got flies everywhere. So annoying. Um, Amazon. Yeah, it's on Amazon. You're on Amazon. Can in inbox you? Yeah, you got you got some. Um, you know, I know some me, some authors. Amazon. You know, they got the trunk open. And... But I'll put the link to the book um, <laughs> in the comments too. Um, All for right. Sure. So um, if you do have more questions, though, because it is getting late, and you know, I'm a teacher, so I gotta work. So, um, so if you do have more yes, questions, feel free to drop the questions, or if you don't want people to see them, just inbox, um, either one of us. Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. Thank you so much. It was really fun. Uh, even though we haven't talked in forever and it seemed like it was, it seemed like it was like <laughs> old times. I know, so right? Like and, um, <laughs> share the video too. Forgot to say that. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Be blessed.